Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we'll learn about inverse filtering and minimum mean square error filtering, which is also known as Wiener filtering. Let us take a look at uh, inverse filter. So uh, from the degradation model, uh, we have this equation which we have already looked at, uh, which is G of UV is equal to F of UV into H of UV, which is the degradation function plus the noise. So so because of the degradation function and the noise, uh, we have the degraded image. And after we obtain this H of UV uh, by using the techniques that we learned in the previous lectures, we can estimate this F of UV, which is the original uh, image by inverse filter like this. So basically we can get back F cap of UV, which is the estimate of F of UV. Uh, which is equal to g of uv by h of uv and uh, if you simplify it further in the first term h of uv gets cancelled uh, because it's in the denominator uh, and numerator it gets cancelled and in the second term we are left with n of uv by h of uv now here lies the problem what happens if uh, the value of h of uv is quite small then uh, this term will get amplified that is the biggest problem of inverse filter. Okay, so that is called as basically noise enhancement when uh, H of UV is small. So to avoid the side effect of enhancing noise, we can apply this transformation to a frequency component U comma V with a radius D naught from the center of H of UV. So we do this uh, step uh, iteratively. Okay, uh, we'll we'll apply. Uh, one time uh, d naught and check for the result and we'll try to fine tune it i will see the example in the next slide and uh, basically we rarely use this inverse filter it's not so popular because of this uh, noise enhancement effect so uh, basically in practice the inverse filter is not popularly used now coming to the limitations of uh, inverse uh, filtering so basically, even if the degradation function is known, the undegraded image cannot be recovered exactly because n of uv is the random function which is not known. And if the degradation function has zero or a small value, value, the ratio easily dominates the estimate f of uv. And uh, one approach to get rid of zero or this uh, small value problem is to limit the frequency or uh, the filter frequency to the value near the origin so here is the example of uh, application of uh, inverse filter so if, uh, this is the original image and uh, in order to degrade it we'll apply this uh, air turbulence model that we studied in the previous lecture so once we apply this uh, air turbulence model, the image will be degraded and it will become like this. So you can see here, uh, it has uh, become blur. Air image has become uh, blur. Now, if we apply the full inverse filter, the result will be like this. So this is the result of uh, applying the full filter. And this is the result of applying the filter with d not equal to 40 now we, uh, here we are uh, trying to identify which is the optimum value of d not so this d not the distance from the origin which we studied in the uh, second module uh, uh, in the frequency domain filtering so as you move away from the origin you reach higher and higher frequencies and uh, the center is zero frequency and uh, near to that is the low frequency and as you move away you get high frequency so with d naught equal to 40 we get this result and with the d naught equal to 70 we get this result this looks uh, somewhat uh, better than the remaining uh, two results and it is somewhat uh, similar to the original image now if we uh, find to uh, try to uh, increase the d naught to 85 again 
uh, the uh, the image looks uh, much more uh, degraded so for this example d not equal to 70 uh, suits perfectly okay so this is how to uh, apply the inverse filter we try to fine tune the d not okay then apply the filter to that particular uh, window and we'll get back the original image okay uh, so this is a iterative process Next type of filter we are going to study is the Wiener filter or also called as the minimum mean square error filter. So uh, the problem with the inverse filtering is that it has no explicit provision for handling the noise. Uh, the Wiener filter incorpor incorporates both degradation function and statistical characteristics of noise in the restoration process. The objective of the Wiener filter is to find the estimate of uncorrupted image F such that mean square error is minimum. And the uh, Wiener filter is basically an optimum filter. It is uh, assumed that uh, the noise and image are uncorrelated and one or the other uh, has zero mean. And the gray levels in the estimated uh, image F cap are linear function of uh, gray levels in G. Let us uh, derive an expression for uh, Wiener filter. The objective of Wiener filter as we studied before is to optimize the mean square error given by this equation E square is equal to E into F minus F cap whole square. So here E this capital E is the expected value and F is the original uh, image and F cap is the estimate of the original image. And uh, by this uh, optimize, optimization of mean square error means uh, we are trying to find an optimum value for this E, okay, uh, uh, E square. So if the estimate F cap is uh, somewhere near or equal to F, then this error will be less or zero. And if it is, uh, if the difference uh, between estimated and the original image is more, then it will get amplified. So it will return a much bigger number as it uh, as the difference grows. So uh, we already have the Wiener formula, which is given by F cap of U V is equal to H conjugate of U V into S F of U V. S F is the uh, power spectrum of undegraded image uh, divided by S F of U V into magnitude of H of U V square plus S eta of UV. S eta of UV is the power spectrum of noise into G of UV, which is the degradation function. Now, in order to simplify this uh, e expression, divide the numerator and de uh, denominator by SF of UV so that you get rid of this uh, SF of UV in the nu numerator. So you will end up with this equation H uh, conjugate of UV by magnitude of uh, H of UV square plus S eta of UV by SF of UV into G of UV. Now, in order to further simplify this equation, multiply numerator and denominator by H of UV. So, H of UV into H conjugate of UV is uh, basically magnitude of H of UV square divided by uh, 1 by H of UV into magnitude of H of UV square plus S eta of UV by SF of UV. So, this is the simplification uh, we should arrive at so that uh, we have. Uh, this term uh, separated uh, h of uv 1 by h of uv is uh, separated and we have g of uv outside now with this simplification uh, what's happening here is this term s eta of uv which is power spectrum of noise is a constant and another term s f of uv which is the power spectrum of undegraded image is unknown okay so that means uh, there is no problem with zeros unless h of uv and s eta of uv are both zeros okay so uh, so unless they are both zeros then there won't be any issue and when uh, noise is zero the wiener filter will be equal to inverse filter so you can uh, check the uh, inverse filter equation so when the noise is zero essentially this term becomes zero that means uh, this uh, magnitude terms cancel out in numerator and denominator what we are left with is g of uv by h of uv which is the inverse filter uh, that we studied in the 
previous topic so this is the uh, expression for vena filtering since the value of power spectrum of uh, s eta of uv which is the power spectrum of uh, noise uh, which is equal to magnitude of n of uv whole square and uh, the magnitude uh, power spectrum of the undegraded image s f of uv which is equal to magnitude of f of uv whole square are uh, uh, rarely known the Wiener filter is frequently approximated so how do we approximate it let's see so uh, we take the Wiener filter formula so which we simplified and arrived at at the last uh, slide and uh, this term uh, is the thing here okay so this part is difficult to estimate okay s eta of uv and sf of uv so this is difficult to estimate and uh, what we can do is uh, we just replace uh, this term denominator second term by k okay so this is what we do in uh, approximation and uh, we basically choose this k manually to obtain the best visual result and that is a manual uh, process okay so just uh, see the results and uh, just try to fine tune that k value this is how it is done in a in approximation of winner filter the advantages of uh, winner filtering are uh, first one the winner filter does not have a zero value problem that means uh, as we saw in the inverse filter uh, when the denominator term which is uh, h of uh, uv degradation function was low or zero it used to amplify the noise so that problem is not there in the winner filter so that is the first advantage second advantage is that the result obtained by this vena filter is more closer to the original image than the inverse filter uh, we'll see that with an example this is the first example we have a motion blurred image uh, this image of a, a cameraman now if you try to de blur the image using vena filter uh, with k value of 0 0.01 this is the result you can see uh, in the input image uh, it is blurred edges are not clear and you can see the roller of white part into this hair part and uh, the coat border is not clear here and uh, if you de-blur it using the vena filter you can see uh, the edges have become quite sharp but the downside is you can see these bands here which is not there in the input image so this is the unwanted stuff so let's see we'll try to fine tune it further uh, now if you put k equal to 0.1 this will be the result bands are disappearing but uh, again edges are not as clear as we would like okay equal to 0 0.1 0 0.01 uh, uh, you can say there is a trade off the edges are clear uh, image has become sharper but still you can see these uh, vertical lines here patterns here even inside the coat here okay and uh, for k equal to 0 0.01 uh, it uh, the bands are more prominent here the image uh, the object itself is quite clear but uh, we don't want this unwanted uh, vertical lines okay so that is overshadowing the uh, good work it has done now one more example we'll consider so this is the original image which we already have seen this image uh, in the previous example also so uh, this is the blurred image uh, due to turbulence again we are using the air turbulence model so when we apply the full inverse filter uh, this result we saw uh, for inverse filtering also this is the result uh, image uh, instead of improving the image it's basically deteriorating it further and uh, this is the best case scenario we observed in the previous example for uh, for uh, inverse filtering uh, with d not equal to 70 we obtained this result okay which is somewhat uh, better looking and this is the result of full vena filter and it's quite good here okay uh, image is much sharper than the uh, one which we obtained from this inverse filter okay so this is the result of using vena filter which performs much better than the inverse filter
another uh, example for winner filtering and motion blurring here uh, we have a uh, input image which is the uh, cover page of uh, digital image processing textbook so what we have done here is uh, we have added uh, motion blur effect plus uh, heavy amount of noise which is awgn noise added here and the noise variance uh, for the first image is uh, 650 and the second image it's reduced to 325 and third image it is 130 okay let's see the uh, deep blurring uh, with the various filters so uh, this is the result of uh, inverse filter okay uh, without any uh, restriction for d not so full uh, inverse filter we have applied and this is the result and this is the result of the wiener filter and you can see uh, you can read the letters here digital image processing it's uh, quite evident and the square and the lines are uh, very much uh, restored okay so from this input to this output is a remarkable job next uh, for the second image again uh, the inverse filter is not uh, giving any kind of information out of it uh, but the wiener filter uh, is doing much better job you can see uh, you can clearly read the letters and uh, the pattern also here uh, visible here on this uh, black background here third with the reduced uh, variance of 130 inverse filter uh, is also giving some results and you can read the letters here so it's uh, quite good enough here but look at the result of using vena filter it has uh, nullified all the effect of uh, motion blur and awgn and uh, it has uh, returned a very clear looking image which is uh, which is somewhat uh, or exact to the input image before adding the motion blur or uh, awgn so this is the advantage of using wiener filter the problem of uh, having to know something about the degradation function h is common to all methods discussed uh, in this uh, lecture However, the Wiener filter presents an additional difficulty. The power spectra of the undegraded image and the noise must be known. Uh, when we do not have information on the noise spectra, uh, the Wiener filter is not optimal. So that is the limitation of Wiener filter. Uh, we showed in the approximation that it is possible to achieve excellent uh, results using the approximate uh, approximation formula. Uh, by uh, manually choosing the value of k but uh, a constant estimate of the ratio of power spectra is not always a suitable solution we need to explore a better alternative to this winner filter in this lecture uh, we have looked at uh, inverse filter and uh, minimum mean square error filtering which is the winner filtering in the next lecture, we'll learn about constrained least squares filter. See you at the next lecture. Thank you.